part of the deep web we aren't supposed to see. Part 2. Down the Rabbit Hole They say that curiosity killed the cat. It's funny. That almost feels like a personal attack at this point. I haven't forgotten about last night. I mean, it's not something you can just stop thinking about. What the hell was the last thing I saw? Strange thing is, it never comes up in my nightmares. It's always other stuff. I swear, I can see that dude with no mouth every time I close my eyes. But, maybe it's not so weird. My brain couldn't comprehend it the first time, so how could my subconscious produce a recreation? Shit. I don't want to think about it anymore. But I can't. You see, my problems aren't just in my head anymore. I thought I was done with this shit after the men in black paid me a visit. I thought it was over. In retrospect, that was just wishful thinking. No, it was delusional. After what I saw? I guess it doesn't work like that. I guess the world just isn't that simple. Here's what's been happening. Wednesday. It's been three days since I've gone back to work, and I think I'm being followed. No. I'm sure I am. The thing is, the first time I didn't really notice. Whoever the hell they are, they've been using different vehicles. Always the same routine. After work, I get into my car and start driving home. Another vehicle always tails me until I turn into my driveway, and they just drive past. Now, if it happens once, whatever. But happens three times? Under normal circumstances, I could call it a coincidence. For obvious reasons, I can't do that now. I'm not really sure what the hell they want. Maybe they're trying to monitor me. God, that's all I hope they're trying to do. If that's the case, I'll just lay low and write it out. Just give them what they want. Thursday. This time, I tried to get a glimpse of them in my rear view. Windows were tinted. Great. Again, I pulled into my driveway and they kept going. Now, I know I said I just wanted to go and ride it out, but this kind of shit really does take a toll on you. I don't want to deal with whatever the hell this is anymore. I swear they're following closer and closer each time. Friday. I did something different today. Took public transit instead of driving. I've never needed a drink more in my life, so I went to the bar after work. I guess this was more of an experiment. To see how closely they've been tracking me. If they're bothered by the waiting, they can go fuck themselves. I'm still living my life. Although I couldn't keep my eyes off the windows the whole time I was there. After getting sufficiently wasted, I flagged down a cab. And surprise, surprise, there they were, right behind us. But here's what I didn't expect. It was the same car from yesterday. Looks like they gave up trying to act incognito. Not sure how I feel about that. Damn it, something else has changed. They didn't just keep driving this time. After the cab dropped me off, I turned around to see that damn car parked half a block away from my house. I just went inside. The hell was I supposed to do? Calling the cops didn't even occur to me, but to be honest, I don't think that would have helped. It's been three hours now and they're still there. I haven't been watching them the whole time, so I don't know whether or not they're actually in the car. Not fun to think about. There's no way in hell I'm sleeping tonight. It's about 2 a.m. now. I just got a text. Private number. Here's what it said. Leave your house. Don't use the front door. They're still there. Come to the all-night diner about five blocks away. Don't think about driving. They'll know. Be quick. They're coming in soon. Don't get followed. Leave your lights on. I froze after reading this. They're coming in. For what? Who the hell's texting me? 
Now, I don't know what you would have done in this situation, but I took the warning. I was paranoid as hell at this point. Buzzed and tired, I put on a jacket and went out my back door. I also took a backpack with my other laptop in it. Not sure why, but I felt I needed to. I waited for a second before climbing my own fence. When I was sure nobody had noticed, I started heading towards the diner. After about 40 minutes, I finally got there. Would have been shorter, but I pretty much ducked into the bushes every time a car passed. I scanned the patrons. A table of drunk college kids, a few truckers, a dude in a hoodie typing away on a computer in the back. He didn't look threatening. Actually, he was pretty scrawny. I made an educated guess. I walked up to his table and sat down. He looked up at me. Hi. What do you want? You texted me. There was a brief pause. I got worried for a second. Uh, was it not him? But he broke the silence. Right. They follow you? No, I don't think so. He nodded. All right. And then he laughed. Like this was supposed to be funny. Oh man, you screwed up, didn't you? Hard to disagree with that. What were you doing anyways? What were you trying to find? Nothing, I swear. I just did it for the hell of it, I guess. He just stared at me, in amused disbelief. Oh well, that's fucking lame. Would have been cool if you respire or something. He chuckled again. Look, who are you? How did you know they were after me? Who are they, anyways? I pelted him with questions. Alright, settle down there. I'm not going to tell you who they are. I don't know either. But I will tell you they do not have good intentions. Fantastic, I thought. Well, how do you know about them? He paused. They came after me. One second I'm reading about demons on the moon, the next, I'm getting my door kicked down. This was months ago. I skipped town. I was confused. Wait, wh what do you mean? They tried to kill me, dude. I couldn't believe this. And you were just few and links? That was it? You, you teach other people how to get there or something? He raised an eyebrow. No, why do you ask? I was floored. They didn't do that to me. They just came by, took my laptop, and gave me a warning. Now it was his turn to look shocked. Really? He seemed to think about something for a while. He then proceeded to ask me what they looked like. Just men in suits, I responded. What did they ask you? Was his first follow-up question. Again, I told him, but then I remembered the last thing they said to me. They also asked me what my priorities were. Weird ass question. His face went blank for a second. Yeah. Yeah, strange, ain't it? What followed was an uncomfortable silence. I finally asked him the thing that had been on my mind ever since that night. That page with just four links. What the hell is that supposed to be? He raised his eyebrow and told me he didn't know what I was talking about. This is where things got strange. After I told him a rough explanation of what I had saw, his expression changed completely. I could make out a sudden flare in his demeanor. What did you type in the prompt? He asked me. What also seeks me? I answered. I was thoroughly confused at his point. Isn't that what you did as well? He just shook his head. No. He then shut his laptop and stood up. Well, where the hell are you going? I inquired. We've been here too long. Look, I know you have questions, but I can't answer them for you. Go to a motel tonight or something. And just like that, he was gone. What was I going to do? Stop him? I still have no idea who the hell this guy is. The only thing I got out of him was his name. Jackson. And even that's probably fake. Tired as hell and still a little bit drunk, 
I left the diner and tried to stay hidden as I looked for a nearby motel. Obviously, this wasn't fun. Now here I am, sitting in some sketchy motel at 4.30am. I can barely keep my eyes open, but I also can't help but look over my shoulder every second I'm awake. This is the pinnacle of shitty situations. I guess I'll try to get some sleep. Nothing else I can do. I'll try and figure it out in the morning. Saturday. Well, I guess it's been Saturday for a while, actually. It's 8am now. Barely got any sleep. I have this creeping, ominous feeling in my gut that something just isn't right. I turned on the TV. Anything to clear my mind for a bit. What I saw next did the opposite of that. It was a news report. A man strangled to death in a KFC bathroom. But the person murdered was one of the guys that came into my house and took my computer last night. No suspects. I just stared at the screen for the longest time. What the hell was going on? My phone suddenly buzzed. A different message from a private number. This is what it said. Go to the swimming pool on 5th Street. In the men's locker room, go to locker 128. The combination is 122733. Further instructions are there. Do so before this text message gets intercepted. Don't bring your phone. Of course, how stupid was I? My phone was still on me. Surely whoever was after me had been able to track it. This had never even crossed my mind. Out of curiosity, I peeked outside my window. Sure enough, the car that's been following me was now parked right there. Luckily for me, I caught my first glimpse of the driver and the passenger getting out. They were both wearing gloves and one was holding a briefcase. They were walking towards the entrance now. After I've emailed this to myself and a friend, I'm going to need to think quick. I've already dropped my phone in the toilet and I'm going to need to get rid of this laptop next. But people need to know that this happened. If you hear from me again, looks like I found a way out of this. What a goddamn shit show this has been. Part 3 The Chase Well, here I am again. I'm currently on a plane heading to Scottsdale, Arizona. I haven't actually been out of state in six years. I thought I would eventually, just didn't expect it to be under these circumstances. Anyways, let me just back it up a bit first. This is what happened. Right after I disposed of the laptop, I heard my lock being tampered with. Somebody was trying to pick it. Now, I've never been great under pressure, so you can imagine how I was feeling. But the human mind is an interesting thing. When you think you're at the end of the line, your will to live really ramps up. The balcony, I thought. Only way out of this. Without hesitation, I ran out and climbed over it. Fortunately, it was on the second floor, so I didn't break my legs. Now came the decision. Run or hide. Both didn't seem too promising. Shit, I thought. I was panicking. That's when I spotted Salvation. A cab parked on the other side of the lot. I bolted for it. I tapped on the window, startling the driver. Mr. Horvat? He said. Well, no, it wasn't, but I nodded anyways. You said 8.40, didn't you? He looked at me confused. F finished early. Let's go. There was anxiousness in my voice, but I tried to hide it. Last thing I needed was for the guy to think I was a lunatic and drive off. I got in, told him the address, and we got out of there. As we left the lot, I looked back. The two men I saw coming out of the car were now on the balcony where I was. I could tell that there was a dead stare directed right at me behind their sunglasses. Despite all this, relief washed over me. It was short-lived, however. I replayed the message I got in my head. Do so before this text gets intercepted. That meant I was still on the clock. If they don't know where I'm headed yet, they soon will. 
We finally got to the place about 15 minutes later. As soon as I got in, I rushed to the locker room. It was mostly empty. I kept repeating the same combination in my head. This was the only thing I had. I didn't really care about getting answers before, but it seemed like I had no choice now. I finally found the locker. I don't know why this guy chose such a massive place. 12 left, 27 right, 33 left. I swung it open. Sitting there was an older Blackberry model and an envelope. I opened it up to find a plane ticket, $20,000 cash, and a sticky note. In horrific penmanship, the words check phone, password, snake tracks were scrolled across it. I obliged and booted up the ancient device. I remember being slightly amused. I always begged my parents for one of these when I was a kid. This was a far cry from that. I took a quick look through the phone. It was mostly blank. No apps downloaded, no pictures, nothing. There was only one contact, bluntly named, Call Me. So I did. After just one ring, a voice answered. There was a sense of tentativeness in his tone. Somehow it sounded familiar. Who is this? Uh, well, how the hell was I supposed to answer this? Should I say my name? I got your message, I finally responded. There was a brief pause. His response caught me off guard. What's your religious affiliation? His tone had gotten a lot more aggressive. Why the hell was he asking me this? I thought. I didn't have enough energy to question him, though. Raised Protestant, but now agnostic. I guess. Was my answer. He seemed to breathe a quick sigh of relief. He cut the line. Well, shit. Is this guy nuts or something? My thoughts were interrupted as I got a message. He sent me an address and a room number. Meet me was the only other thing he'd typed. I looked at it for a second before coming to my senses. I'm an idiot. I should have just taken the stuff and bolted. I heard the door of the locker room swing open. The footsteps coming towards where I was. Sprinting, actually. I flipped shit. I shoved my stuff into my pockets and started looking for a way out. Again, there was really only one option here. I started making a break for the pool entrance. As I ran, fucking gunshots started ringing out behind me. I could tell they were using silencers, but boy, that doesn't do a whole lot when you're only 40 feet away. I suddenly felt a sharp pain in my side. I saw a bullet penetrate the locker right up ahead. God, that didn't miss by much. I ran faster than I thought I was ever able to. I almost slipped in the damn pool as I stumbled out. The lifeguard shouted after me as I burst out the emergency exit. I couldn't stop that. I hurried along, making turns every minute, looking over my shoulder the whole time. It's a good thing I was downtown. I blended into the sea of people easily. At one point I saw a pair of policemen. I considered telling them I really did. But what was that going to do? They'll search for those two guys, turn up nothing, monitor my house for a couple of days and call everything off. It wasn't going to solve anything. I ducked into the hair salon. I couldn't run anymore. The barber just looked at me like I was insane. Screw it, I thought. Might as well make myself less recognizable whilst I'm here. I got him to shave it all off. I spent the rest of the day making various purchases. I used laptop, new set of clothes, some bandages and a pair of shades. At least something good came out of this. The flight was supposed to be in a couple of hours at this point. I called a cab and made my way there. And that's where I am now. I've got a long trip ahead of me still. Let's see what happens next. As I made my way out of the airport, I recoiled at the heat. God, it's November. How does anybody live around here during the summer? I called another cab, got to the address. It was Holiday Inn. I laughed to myself. How ominous, I thought. I made my way up to the room and knocked on the door. A billion thoughts were running through my head. What if it was a trap? I actually thought about just running away for a second. But I realized that wouldn't accomplish shit. After about a minute, the door opened. A wave of surprise washed over me. But in retrospect, this is exactly who I should have been expecting. 
It was the other guy who came to my house that night. The one that didn't get strangled. He didn't look great, however. He had a black eye and a busted lip, and just looked tired in general. He looked me over before gesturing me in. He had a slight limp as he walked. Nice haircut, he muttered softly. He sat down on the bed and I sat on the couch across from him. There was a long silence. The whole time he just stared at the ground. To be honest, I didn't know what to say. So I said nothing. He finally spoke up. Might as well tell you what's going on. He then proceeded to let it all out. About 14 years ago, there was an incident in the Paris catacombs. I got chills after hearing this. Four teenagers decided it would be a good idea to wander off during a tour. I guess they got lost or something because they weren't there at the end. The police pretty much swept everywhere. No sign of them. Eventually, the government decided to set up infrared cameras all around the place, just to see what would turn up. One day, one of the cameras picked up movement. Nobody anticipated what they were going to see next. It was hell manifested. An abomination of writhing limbs somehow stuck together squirmed across the screen. There were four human heads stuck on top of this thing. You can guess who they were. I was beyond speechless. I thought about the video of the catacombs. Glad I didn't stick around for that grand reveal. He continued. They decided to send elite forces down there to exterminate it. Apparently it took down 12 men before they put it down. Now the question was, what were they going to do about the video? They couldn't just get rid of it, but they didn't want anybody to see it either. And this was around the same time the whole Snowden thing was going on, so they didn't feel comfortable with just using government servers. So this is where the website you saw comes into play. They got the most seasoned technical experts they had to bury it somewhere deep in the internet. And I'm talking about as deep as they could go. Nobody was supposed to know about it. Nobody was supposed to find it. And nobody was even supposed to know what to look for. I wrecked my brain over this. Sure, I knew my way around. But there was no way in hell that I was on par with a government expert. So how did I find it? He continued. And for a while it worked. They had made a pact with governments worldwide. Anything deemed unfit for public knowledge went on that site. There were even precautions. For every real thing on there, they posted four fake ones. For the select few that actually managed to find it. Wait, what? I couldn't believe this. He just chuckled. <laughs> yeah, most of that stuff you saw was bullshit. Most. The videos are harder to fake. I didn't know how to feel about this. I was slightly relieved, I guess. Just slightly. He kept on. The logic behind this was that once people found these things, they'd look further into them. However, since they were fabricated, nothing would come up and the page would be disregarded. Just as a gag site. At least that was the idea. I knew where I was getting at. What about the people that started looking into the real things? He sighed. Look, nobody would have given a shit if they started spouting off to their friends or on the internet. People would think they're crazy. It's the damn people that just have to go and find proof. The ones that plan to publicize it. Yeah, they get silenced. I was about to say something. I think he noticed because he cut me off. Look, don't put that moralistic shit on me. They didn't have to do it. It was their choice. They were committing a crime. Do you really think public knowledge about any of these things would help anybody? No, it wouldn't. Sometimes ignorance is bliss, alright? To be honest, I had to agree. But here's where things really went to shit. He went on. Before, there would be maybe two breaches a month. And then it skyrocketed up to 20. And then 50. They looked into it. Apparently there were rumours circulating around the deep and dark web. A rumour about a page that held secrets nobody was supposed to see. 
they decided to find out how easy it was to access this place from just reading forums and shit. It took the experts about 20 minutes to find it. Just by solving some fucking riddles and then following these concealed links that would spawn from them. And then there was the final prompt. What do you seek? You've seen it, no? I nodded. Apparently, there's a lot of different answers that could work. Anyways, that didn't make sense. Everybody that was supposed to know about this was grilled. Somebody had to be doing this, right? Nobody fessed up. Honestly, everybody seemed genuine when they said they didn't do it. They knew the consequences. After a brutally in-depth investigation, nothing was resolved. And then it hit them. Back in 2010, they had also finalised an experimental AI. I'll spare you the details, but it went off the rails. Nobody could control it. As soon as they thought they could corner it into a virtual trap, it just disappeared. It didn't come up again. Until now. He paused after that. Like he was waiting for me to connect the dots. So you think that this AI resurfaced and is now directing people there? I asked. He said that he doesn't think that's the case. He knows it is. It's the only feasible explanation, he stated. But why? I don't know, he responded. I was starting to get a hunch now. About why this was happening to me. These people. They aren't after me because I saw those links, are they? He just nodded. It's what I saw after. And you think this AI has something to do with it? Another nod. Well, what did I see? He took a second before speaking. I couldn't tell you. There are some things that even I don't know about. All I can tell you is that there are some groups, some people out there, beyond any government, that are after this kind of stuff. This forbidden knowledge. And somehow, they know that you've seen it. And they want to know what you know. And they came after you as well, I asked. Yeah, they know that we talked to you. A wave of guilt came over me. Did I get that guy killed? However, that guilt quickly turned into frustration. Well, what the hell am I supposed to know? I don't know what the hell it was I saw. A dry chuckle came out of him. Well, they don't care, do they? They'll jump at anything. And who do you work for? The government? I finally asked. The question had been on my mind since I got there. Sort of. Was all he responded with. He got up, taking out a pair of car keys. We gotta figure this out. We gotta go. Go where? Vegas. In any other situation, I would have been ecstatic. We went outside and he led me to an older, beat-up sedan. Inconspicuous, he said with a smile. I could tell he was just trying to lighten the mood. The drive was long and arduous. We barely spoke. My brain was fried at this point, so I didn't bother asking any more questions. I did remember one particular conversation we had, though. Listen, if anything happens to me, there should be a file in the Blackberry named Contingency. Everything you need to know will be in there. I remember feeling flustered. What? What could happen to you? I responded. I don't know. Just in case, I guess. Don't lose that phone. In reality, I knew there were a lot of things that could happen. I just didn't want to admit it. He woke me up when we arrived at McCarran. I was confused. Do you have plane tickets? Don't need them, he responded. He got out of the car and I followed him. What happened next was strange. He just walked past everyone. The check-in, security, everybody. They didn't seem to pay any attention to him. Not to me, either. That's when I started to wonder who the hell this guy really was. As we walked past the various stores and restaurants set up near departures, he took a sharp turn. I stumbled, keeping up. He walked towards an unassuming door set up right between two shops. He swung it open and I followed. We walked down a bunch of corridors 
turning every so often. Various men in suits passed us but didn't seem to acknowledge our presence. We finally got to another door. This one required a keycard. He took one out and scanned it. I didn't realize how huge this place really was until I thought about it after. We must have passed at least 15 other hallways. Anyways, the door opened up to what looked like a long flight of stairs. We trekked down for about 15 minutes before we got to what looked like another terminal. Now, it didn't look futuristic or anything, just a regular damn terminal. Surely there's no plane taking off here, I asked. He said I was right. That's when I noticed the train tracks. Now we wait. And he sat down on a bench. Well, correct. I'd given up trying to piece this together in my head, so I didn't even bother asking what this place was. Let's just see what happens, I thought. But as I soon found out, things are just not that simple these days. I spotted a washroom sign towards the back and headed for it. As I was washing my hands after finishing up, I noticed what looked like a black card stuck into the side of the mirror. I plucked it out and looked at it. It was standard business card size, just plain white with black text. But here's what it said. From far and wide, we search for meaning. As seconds pass, since time of weaning, our destiny is sealed. We'll face the wraith. We don't need hope. We have our faith. We will not stop until we're dust. All for God, in whom we trust. Creepy, I thought. And then I turned it over. In big bold letters was F-O-T-L-G. No idea what that's supposed to be. However, in that moment I felt that something just wasn't right. It's that creeping sensation you get when something just feels off. I needed to tell him, who the hell he is, about this. I opened the door and he was gone. I searched around the terminal for a bit but it was nowhere to be found. Hell, there was nobody else here. The place started rumbling slightly. The train was coming. Well, I sure as hell wasn't getting on by myself. I looked around a bit more before I heard footsteps coming from downstairs. Great, I thought. He's back. Then I realized it wasn't just one pair of steps. There were multiple. Instead of seeing a familiar face, I was greeted with four of what I assumed to be men. I couldn't tell because their faces were covered with a burlap sack that had eye holes carved into it. Kind of like what Scarecrow wears in Batman Begins. The only difference was a symbol that seemed to be spray painted on where the forehead should be. It was simple. A vertical semicircle with angular arrows going through it. As I recall, the rest of their getup was normal. Just plain street clothes. I was frozen. And then I realized that one of them had liquid dropping off his glove. Dark liquid. The next few moments were a blur. I remember the train pulling up and those guys starting to run towards me. I started bolting for the train. It was a weird one. Only one section and one set of doors. I don't think I saw a driver. As I ran up to it, the doors opened automatically. I remember frantically looking for a shut button, but there wasn't one. I just stared in horror as those freaks got closer and closer. As they got within 10 meters, I closed my eyes and just prayed for the best. I opened them and heard kicking and banging at the door. It was an opening for them. I watched their crazed eyes follow me as the train started moving. I was safe. But only for now. I turned on the phone again and took a thorough look through it. Sure enough, the text file he mentioned was there. Guess I'll read it soon, after I'm done with this. Now I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know what's waiting for me there. My head's pounding. All I know is that I should have just stayed on Google. <laughs>